What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Ty Little Gentleman. And for all y'all that want a piece of One Piece, welcome to Wano Peace. Haters get mad when I Luffy, boss up, who's he? Haters get mad when I Sanji, kicking it like Jet Li. Haters get mad when I Nami, that money, come find me. Haters get mad when I Zoro, cut checks like Koro. Before we even start this video, I want to give a shout out to the Wano Peace Pirate Crew. If you want to join the Wano Peace Pirate Crew, hit that subscribe button below. Do it! Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Wano underscore Peace for Wano Peace memes, Wano Peace channel updates, One Piece cosplay, and One Piece fan art. This week, we are recapping chapters 421 through 430. So, when we last left off, the Buster Call was being called, and they were bombing Eni's lobby. The only place they decided not to bomb was the Bridge of Hesitation because Admiral Aokiji wanted to capture Nico Robin and not kill her. So they decided not to bomb that area. The people that they wanted to kill with the Buster Call was Luffy and his gang. So that includes the Galley Law mechanics the and the Frankie family and also the Giants now. So Kokoro is in the underground passage with um, her granddaughter and the pet, and then also Chopper and Nami, and um, the other three are coming in the opposite way. So they're both meeting each other in the underground passage. So the other three are Zoro, Soge King, and Sanji. So they're all coming this way. When they meet, Sanji and that crew realize that these, this group is running from the water that's flooding in. They end up getting trapped inside the water, and what we find out is Kokoro is actually a mermaid. And she says that there are more mermaids on Fishman Island. Also, an interesting thing she said was that mermaids, uh, their fins split apart at age 30, enabling them to walk on land and live on land. So that was pretty cool. She saved everybody and brought them to the boat where Frankie and Nico Robin were. Now we switch scenes. Luffy is still fighting Lucci because if he doesn't defeat Rob Lucci, Rob Lucci is just going to go kill the rest of the members of his crew. One thing I really like about Luffy is that the whole time he's fighting you, he's learning. He's not just an idiot. Even though he acts like an idiot a lot of times, he's not just an idiot. When it comes to fighting, he's an expert. He's a genius. He sits there. He watches you. Everything you do, he watches why your moves work. He figures it out and comes up with a battle plan for how he can best defeat you. One weird thing I noticed is that Luffy always bites his thumb in order to activate gear three. I'm not sure exactly why he does this. If you know, comment below. Let's talk about it because I'm not sure why he bites his thumb. It looks a little weird, but it's, I guess I bite my thumb too if I can activate gear three that way. When he activates gear three, he uses a, a gum gum giant pistol and his hand gets real big, like the size of a giant and he's able to punch Luchi through the wall. And Luchi ends up falling on one of the warships. When he falls on that warship, Luffy comes over, he follows him, they're destroying the warship, just kind of wrecking it, battling, because you know he's using all these giant gear three attacks. And um, what ends up happening is one of the vice admirals of another ship tells his crew to fire on that ship. No hesitation. Some of the soldiers wanted to hesitate. He shot one of the soldiers that hesitated, and then they literally blew up that whole ship full of, you know, a thousand of their men, which was kind of crazy. But, you know, they're doing it all in the good of justice. Now, another vice admiral told a story about 500 soldiers that were captured by pirates. And these pirates were holding these 500 soldiers for ransom. They wanted to keep these soldiers and trade them for the crown. So these pirates, the pirate captain will be the king of this area and um, in exchange for these soldiers' lives. Now, the government at the time was thinking about it or that area's government was thinking about it and they were like, maybe we should just do it. Give them the crown, we'll save these people, live happily ever after. But a 13-year-old kid sent by the world government came and killed all 500 of the captives and then decapitated the um, the captain of the pirates, and he was known as Dark Justice. They were definitely talking about Rob Lucci, and 
they had faith that since Rob Lucci was on Amy's lobby, that he would be able to capture Nico Robin no matter how bad the situation was. But what they didn't count on was Luffy. Now, when Luffy goes to gear three, his power increases, but his speed decreases. And Rob Lucci used this against him. Now, when the soldiers, when the warship blows up the other warship, Luffy and Lucci make it away from the ship, right? They get away. So it was kind of a waste of blowing up those thousand men, which is sad. You know, I would hate for my life to be a waste. They didn't think of it as a waste because they felt like it was a necessary sacrifice in order to get capture Nico Robin, destroy Luffy. It all, it's all about perspective, I guess, right? Now, after Luffy uses Gear 3, he becomes Little Luffy. And he goes to hide because he knows if Luchi finds him, he's going to put the whooping on him, right? Now, this is an unfortunate side effect of Gear 3. Every time he uses it, he ends up Little Luffy. So he's just Little Luffy walking around, running around, trying to get away. And um, what happens, Luchi sees him and thinks he's just playing around. Then he comes and puts the whooping on because... He's like, all right, here's this guy. He's little, let me take advantage of this. That's what any smart opponent would do. Not everybody's like Goku. Okay, now I'll let you get to your strongest and then we'll fight. No, not everybody's like that. Now we switch back and Spandam is talking to Frankie who's standing in front of Nico Robin. And he's saying, hey, why are you even trying to help her? Why are you trying to help her? Because you're just gonna end up like Tom. And then when he says Tom, woo, Frankie just knocks him out. Like, just hits him with a punch, knocks him out. He might not have knocked him out, but he knocked him back and just left him speechless at that moment. Now, Spandam uses his sword, Funk Free, and he aims it at Nico Robin and tries to kill her. And Frankie stops it from killing her and then takes it, picks up the giant elephant and slams it on Spandam. Now, Luchi is whooping Luffy because Luffy is little. Now, just before he finishes Luffy, he feels like this weakness in his legs because of the damage he took earlier from Luffy whooping him. This gives Luffy enough time to get back to regular size and the battle's back on. Okay, the Giants, the Frankie family, and the Galila mechanics, they make it to the front gate. When they get to the front gate, there's three, three warships sitting right there aiming right at them. And these warships just let them have it, just completely bombard them. Um, it was a very, very sad moment for me uh, because, you know, they worked so hard to get Frankie back. They all came to help save Nico, Robin, and Frankie. And then, you know, you get caught slipping at a bombardment when you think you're safe and then you're not. It's really sad. At this point, the Marines confirmed them as dead. So this devastates everybody because they hear it over the Din Din Mushi. But, plot twist, they actually survive. The Giants take the most of the bombardment, they take it, and then um, Pauly of Galila uses his rope to keep them from falling in the ravine. So they're still alive. Frankie starts crying, he's real, real hyped, and we can stop playing that sad music now. Violin, that's a serious, I know. This really is the world's smallest violin. One thing I realized, even with Pell the Falcon, is that nobody dies in One Piece. You always think somebody's gonna die, and then nobody dies. The day somebody dies, I'm gonna wonder if they're gonna come back some other way, or be rejuvenated, or revived some other way, because nobody ever dies. Even the bad guys, they just get taken to jail. Okay. Luffy goes into gear two at this point. And he's, you know, whooping Luffy, I mean, whooping Luchi with the, uh, the jet pistol and all these type of jet moves. And what ends up happening is Luffy's getting the best of him, but then Luchi hits him with this two-handed punch attack that has, like, more power than an impact dial. And it kind of devastates Luffy because he didn't expect this amount of power because he thought he knew everything that Luchi had to offer. But again, Luffy's a genius when it comes to fighting. He starts to think, how can I defeat this? How can I block this? And so his mind gets to working even while he's getting whooped. At this point, the ships, the warships have surrounded the Bridge of Hesitation because this is where the getaway ship is and also this is where uh, the rest of the Straw Hat Pirates are. So 
they send out 200 captains to come fight. So these guys are all at the same level as smokers, so you know they gotta be nice. So they come and they're fighting uh, Nico Robin, Zoro, Soj King, and Nami are all battling against these people. Chopper's still knocked out at this point. Kokoro is on the ship, you know, and Sanji just appeared for a second. Now Sanji disappeared for what was a very smart reason. One, he saved Kokoro and all of them from the ship when the warships blew up their getaway ship. But also, uh, he closed the gates of justice. Now when you close the gates of justice, these whirlpools start spinning, right? And so, all of a sudden, this voice starts speaking to uh, Soj King, who we know is Usopp now, because he took off his mask and he yelled to Luffy just when Luffy felt like he couldn't battle anymore. He yelled to Luffy, and Luffy got back up and defeated Luch. Now, when Soj King hears this voice coming from the water, he just tells everybody, yo, jump. Jump off the bridge of hesitation, we'll be all right. So they all jump, they grab Luffy, because Luffy is so powerless because he used all of his energy to defeat Rob Lucci, right? Lays Rob Lucci flat, and now Nico Robin throws Luffy towards the water. Everybody jumps towards where Luffy is in the water, and the Going Mary out of nowhere pops out of the water and catches them. Then it gets them out of there. Um, Nami starts navigating the whirlpools. The warships can't navigate the whirlpools, so they're missing the going merry because they can't get a lock on them. Um, what ends up happening is they get away from the warships. The the rest of the group, the Frankie family, Galila, and the Giants, they get on the P Puffing Tom and use that to head back. And now in the middle of the ocean, Basically, they see the Galila big ship come with Iceberg on it. Now, Iceberg fixed the Going Merry and then let the Going Merry go out by itself and then brought his ship out after it. The Going Merry saved the spirit of the Going Merry, took, led the Going Merry to the Luffy Straw Hat Power Crew, saved them, and then just when they met with the other ship, it started to break down. So at that point, they uh, did a little ceremony for the Going Merry, and it was very sad. And um, they kind of lit it on fire, and the Going Merry actually started speaking even more so at this point. It was saying, hey, I wish I could have took you on one more trip, but I'm so glad, you know, I got to save you. And it was the spirit of the ship speaking, and it was just saying that it was so happy about everything it had been through with them. Now, Spandam had tried to tell them to blow up the ship, right, even though Admiral Aokuji didn't want to kill Nico Robin, but Spandam's a liar. What he didn't realize is Admiral Okuji was right there watching the battle. He declared the battle of defeat, told the warships not to even pursue them. So, last thing I wanna say is RIP to the Going Merry, and let me catch you up on the short comments. So, we have Konis, Aisa, Laki, and Nora. They're going for a walk on the Verb. This is a very big deal because usually this was a sacred ground where only God could be. So now, everybody's allowed to walk amongst it. And then you have people from Skypea and people from Shandia just walking around being friendly together. Waipa and the Shandians are restoring the forest. Um, you know, because it probably was, you know, received a lot of damage from all this shocking and thunder shocks that Anel caused. Because what happens in nature is sometimes lightning will strike a tree, that'll cause a fire, and then a fire will just rage on. Usually these fires aren't, uh, don't just burn down everything. Usually it's kind of natural and it takes down a certain amount of trees. That way all the trees aren't sucking up the same amount of nutrients. So less trees, more nutrients for the trees that are there and they can thrive. Little tip. Ganfall and the chief of Shandia are sitting down talking about pumpkin juice. I don't know if they're gonna open a business or what they're about to do, but they're having a nice talk over a glass of pumpkin juice. And Anel just got to the moon. I don't know what that's going to mean, but it looks like he found a hole and it seems like there's life down there. So he's jumping down the hole to see if there's life on the moon. That's something we all want to know, right? So that's cool. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what was your favorite part of these 10 chapters. The Grand Line is a rough place. You're going to need a tough pirate crew to get through. 
why not join the Wano Peace Pirate Crew? Hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for watching this one. Peace.